Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Finnovate podcast. Joining me today, we have Rob Antoniades, co-founder and general partner at Information Venture Partners. Rob, thanks so much for taking the time to be with me today. Thanks, thanks for having me, Greg. So to kick things off, if you wouldn't mind just giving us all a quick background on yourself and what Information Venture Partners is all about. Well, Information Venture Partners is a fintech fund uh, based in Toronto uh, that I've been running now with my partner, Dave Unsworth, for about 10 years. Our, our history actually is from the financial services industry, uh, where we both met and and managed the RBC Venture Partners team uh, before uh, deciding to buy it in 2014 and creating Information Venture Partners. So I unfortunately or fortunately have been a VC for over 25 years and lived through a few cycles. My personal background is uh, mostly in, in capital markets and, and sales and trading equity research. So I'm a CFA. I've spent time in all of those areas uh, before deciding in 1997 to become a VC. And uh, I've been focused on, you know, the, this fintech space, or as we more broadly call it, tech for fin space uh, ever since. Excellent. No, certainly helpful to have seen so many you know, different cycles of the industry. And that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about today, kind of, you know, where we're at in this current cycle, what we see coming up over the next couple of years. Before we jump into that, though, can you tell me a little bit about your overall investment strategy? You know, what kinds of companies or technologies you prefer to invest in? Sure can. So uh, Information Venture Partners is an early stage uh, fund based in Toronto. An early stage to us means enough uh, revenue for us to extrapolate a uh, an investment thesis out of. So early revenue is probably the way I would categorize ourselves. We're, a, we're based in Toronto, but it's a North American fund and the split is probably about 50-50. Uh, what you should understand about our fund, though, is it's all B2B. So there's four themes that we specifically focus on. One of them is, and, and the key one is modernizing financial institutions and whether that's banks or insurers or asset managers or wealth managers. I think it's all about uh, bringing kind of the, the uh, technology and the digitization and more to these institutions to increase their competitiveness. There's a second element to this is really about an embedded finance or embedded FinTech. Uh, we see the evolution uh, of fintech to the consumer, where the consumer wants to consume their product away from the financial institutions, and that infrastructure is of importance to us. I would also tell you that uh, security and compliance is an important area to us. And uh, uh, as you know, financial institutions spend uh, as much money as any other industry on this particular area for obvious reasons. And then the last area that we focus on is really about kind of financial management software or a CFO tech, which is a, the technology that allows the function of finance and the CFO to be more strategic to the business. So as, as you can tell from our description, yes, we're a fintech fund, but I would probably describe us more as a tech for fin fund. Uh, everything we invest in touches financial services or, or finance, and, and those are the types of companies that we're looking for. Yeah, no, it's great. It's really a diverse group there, but um, obviously each one of those, there's there's so much that you can pull out, so many obvious you know, problems that still need to be solved or challenges that are facing the industry. So um, now with that said, let's go ahead and jump into really the the kind of theme of, of this episode here, which is you know, where is the fintech space right now? Um, and from our perspective, you know, there are kind of conflicting signs. You know, over the past year, we saw more early stage companies come to our shows than we've seen in several years. There's this been there's been this resurgence of new, you know, seed stage, Series A stage companies who are coming to Finnovate events, um, which is obviously really good, really positive for the overall health health of the industry. Um, from uh, on the other side of it, though, you see in the news, there's a lot of uh, articles about impending layoffs, impending contractions, austerity measures, things like this. Um, and it's difficult, I think, to kind of reconcile both of those two pieces. I mean, they're both true, but they seem to be contradictory. How does it look from your standpoint? What are you seeing in the fintech space right now? Well, I, I would share the general observations that you have, uh, Greg. And I would, uh, to paraphrase somebody, I would say we we ain't in 2021 anymore. I think the days of easy money 
the days of free or cheap capital, the, the days of pursuing growth at any cost models is done with. And and I think we have had to make the adjustments for various reasons. And I think they're all in the, the headlines of, of the popular press war, inflation, central bank, interest rates, all, all that stuff. And and as a result, we I think are are almost on the cusp here of possibly an economic contraction. And so things have changed. That free flow of capital isn't available anymore, and, and hence the, the the layoffs. We've seen a tremendous amount of of tightening of budgets inside the uh, general, you know, Fortune 500, Global 2000 market. I think we are seeing less of that in in finance, or specifically in financial institutions. Uh, but it's still important. What we are seeing there is a reprioritization of of that spend, and and therefore I think. What what we're we're seeing is that the business models that we have been pursuing, the areas that we have been pursuing, changing. You're seeing companies, the later stage companies, uh, make those adjustments, uh, both because of the absence of ca easy capital. So they're making the layoffs, and I think they're also changing their business models or their or pivoting to areas of of greater priority. Um, I think on the early stage side. You know, uh, this is a great time to be starting a, a business, and and in many cases, uh, people germinated their ideas last year and raised some capital, and that's why we're seeing kind of a wave of these companies. Um, and I think the the seed capital is still very much available. Maybe not angel capital, but seed capital is available for these companies to go out and and uh, and try to prove their their business model. So we're we're seeing a lot there as well. I think actually. Honestly, we're seeing some of the best companies we've seen in years in the last uh, uh, six uh, six to nine months. And uh, I wish we had more capacity to do seed investing because of the quality of these companies. Um, but but it's there, and and I would strongly urge people to 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 pay attention because it is during times like this, difficult times. And we saw this in the financial crisis. We saw this in the dot com area. Great companies get started during difficult times. No, absolutely they do. And and I was around back in 2009, 2010 as well in the fintech space, although admittedly I was very green at that point, so probably didn't have a full appreciation for what I was seeing. But I just remember so many innovative companies coming out of it. And quite frankly, a lot of them were started by people who had recently uh, been let go of of a either from a bank or from a tech firm and sort of had this insider knowledge of here's where there's inefficiencies. Here's a problem that I struggled with on a daily basis when I was working for this bank. Now I'd like to go and build a company, build a product that can really help solve that. And I think this, you know, the amount of talent that exists in the fintech ecosystem right now, the amount of people who have been sort of you know put on the sidelines, however momentarily they find themselves there, I think will probably lead to a lot of new companies being created because people have this hands-on knowledge of exactly where the systems are, uh, I don't want to say broken, but where they could maybe use some updating. Does that line up with, with what you expect to see? You know, this idea that people who have that experience are really well positioned to be able to go out and create the next wave of innovative companies? Well, those are the, the types of entrepreneurs that we seek out, uh, the ones who have lived the problem and who can define that problem extremely well and have come up with a solution for that problem. When we test business models, we spend a lot of time with our LP base, and the LP base in, in our case is comprised of many Canadian banks uh, and other financial institutions. And so we we have an insider's perspective of what is changing and what how they're how they're reprioritizing and spending their budgets and who's spending it, and so we can validate those problems and that's exactly what we're looking for. And the one the one thing that we we did learn, Greg, and and this is just to address that first point that you made about the financial crisis, is today is very different than two thousand eight two thousand and nine. Uh, we saw uh, financial institution struggles. We saw the tax payer led. Um, support to keep them in business and but during those times those financial institutions cut back their their IT budgets um by doing so they opened the door for fintech companies people fintech companies took advantage of the fact uh that the banks weren't innovating they took advantage of the fact that they were focused on on surviving and and not paying attention to the customers and they took advantage of the fact that the, their clients were frustrated by the fact that the taxpayer had to bail them out. And so 
they will never again make that same mistake. And so that's why as a, as a B2B fintech fund, I actually think this is a great time because we're still seeing uh, budgets, technology budgets in financial institutions growing and growing at least at the rate of, of, of inflation, which we didn't see during the financial crisis and we're not seeing from other Fortune 500 uh, type companies and consumer products or manufacturing or other areas like that. And so that entrepreneur that has identified and lived the problem is exactly the individual that we're we're targeting. Yeah, no, you make a really good point about the way that banks are approaching technology at the moment. And I think it's really clear to everybody, the pandemic really accelerated digital adoption among customers. And this war that's being fought right now on the tech front is very real. And we're certainly seeing this from our side as well, that banks are acutely aware that if they want to stay competitive, they need to make sure that they're competing really well on that digital landscape. And so um, certainly that lines up very nicely with what we're seeing. Given all of these changes, you know, you mentioned uh, briefly a couple of minutes ago that your investment strategy needs to be able to respond to these kind of uh, these sort of factors on the one hand, there being maybe more talent out there, more potential entrepreneurs out there, more of a desire from financial institutions to work really quickly and, and um, positively with uh, some of these early stage technologies out there. What are you doing at Information Venture Partners that's maybe different from how you would have thought you'd be doing things you know, a year or two years ago? Um, we're, I'm, I'm not sure we're doing much different, to be honest with you, Greg, because what we, we're a, a very low volume shop. We, out of a, a, a hundred million dollar fund, we'll make 10 investments. So we are very disciplined in, in the way we approach it. We've always done diligence, but we're seeing the rest of the industry do more diligence. What I will tell you is that we're active and we're investing during this period. And I've seen a bunch of VCs put their pens down until there's there's a more more stable uh, environment. Having said that, I think we we do spend time focused uh, and working with entrepreneurs uh, uh, ahead of the time that we need to invest in them to help them build their business, make the right introductions. We've always done that. We've always given them advice. Uh, uh, and we continue to do that because I think we we want to be seen as a, as an organization that is friendly and works with entrepreneurs. And at the end of the day, they're the disruptors and we're the builder. We help them build. So that's that's our role. And uh, and so uh, that thorough kind of uh, disciplined approach is still what we're we're pursuing. It's not what the market did up until uh, nine months ago, uh, but we've always been consistent in that area. And, and the areas that we invest in, and if we go back to the, the themes, uh, you know, whether it's the fintech or the embedded finance or security, okay. the underlying areas may change, but those those themes uh, remain very, uh, very powerful to us. And so we continue to pursue them. Yeah, no, I mean, it makes sense. And I think, you know, to your earlier point, I think things got maybe a little bit ridiculous in 2018, 2019, just the amount of money that was flowing into the space. You know, I, I have obviously friends all through the industry, and I was talking to one of my friends who said, this is really the, the fact that there's kind of a contraction now, some layoffs now is really just a natural response to what happened a couple of years ago, where there's so much money flowing around, companies scaled up incredibly quickly, just trying to see, you know, where can I find some profit, some revenue? Now they're in a position where it's not feasible to maintain staff of that size. And so you sort of have this kind of natural trimming. Here's what we have discovered that really works. Um, all of that to say, you know, this is to some extent a, a very natural part of the cycle, as unpleasant as it can be. Um, but I think the, we're coming up on the end of our time here, and, and there's really just two questions that I'd like to, to close out on. And the first one is a relatively simple one. You know, what's the biggest opportunity that you see in the fintech space right now? Where do you think there's room for somebody to come in and really make a difference? Um, the biggest opportunity? Well, let me let me slightly change it on you. I think the the most underserved market, which isn't necessarily the biggest opportunity, but the most underserved market, in my opinion, is kind of wealth tech or wealth management. Uh, you, you mentioned how broken um, uh, the relationship was between financial institutions or the customers, uh, the, the digitization of that process. Well, it's still broken. We need to bring in a lot of personalization. There's money that's in motion here uh, that's moving from one advisor to another advisor. Uh, the advisor role is is up in the air. What's what's your job? Are you just an, a financial advisor? Are you a therapist? And how are you communicating with your with your your clients? I think there's an entire area there that needs to be. Uh, uh, 
you know, looked at. I think then you're looking at the, the the 50 trillion intergenerational wealth transfer that's coming in the next few years from the boomers to to their kids. Uh, you're looking, and every time we we um, talk about companies, we always ask ourselves, what are they doing on the ESG front? Well, I think that is also being asked of wealth management and asset managers. And so ESG within that area is very important, and and we're still in the early days there, and we're going to have at least a couple of decades worth of refinement there on on how to do ESG appropriately. You know, some things can be dealt with in, in years, but others take decades. Just think about the environment and, and how to how to deal with um, um, the planet today. That That's a multi-decade long process. And so ESG is going to be important. I think we have seen, um, uh, you know, m- millennials uh, get very interested in crypto. Well, what's happened during a crypto collapse? How do we bring them back to more traditional investing? Uh, uh, so convert them back. And, and that's something that needs to be looked at. Um, open banking, how do we incorporate open banking into, into wealth management? So there, I think, so I've given you a lot of different things, but but thematically, that's one of the most underserved markets that, that I, I can see. And so we're we're always looking for interesting technologies that that solve that. And if we had, if we knew what that technology was, we'd be entrepreneurs ourselves. Sure, <laughs> we're not we're VCs, and and uh, and so we're relying on on the people from the industry uh, to come up with the solutions. No, absolutely. I think the creativity of this industry never ceases to amaze me. There's always somebody who sees something, who understands a problem in a way that you know other people aren't able to see, and uh, and I really value that about being in this industry and having this job. Um, so you know, last question, just really briefly, um, is there anything and any piece of advice that you would give to new startup founders in this moment? Anything that they should really just be acutely aware of, given where we are. Uh, I think you need to go back and, and validate the problem statement that you're trying to solve. So there's probably more research that's that's involved there. Um, I, I think, as I said earlier, budgets have been moving around. So if you've gone in one direction, uh, you should probably uh, validate it, validate that that's still the right direction uh, uh, because budgets have, have moved. Uh, um, uh, more discipline, I think you need to be understand that there's less capital available there. Um, than there was before, but for great companies, it's still available. Um, so I, I think that's what I would ask you to do as a, as an entrepreneur is just uh, you know confirm that you're on the on the right track. Uh, I'll give you a very simple example if you want in in our uh, steer category. You know the the CFO tech uh, companies are looking to stay in business, and we have seen hundreds of payable solutions out there. Uh, managing and automating payments and payables. Well, that's interesting, but that's cash flowing out of a business. And I think it was a smart CFO today would be focusing their attention on cash coming into the business and the cash conversion cycle. And so uh, if you're a payables company, maybe you should be looking at or, you know, people are focused more on on the receivables end of the business and bringing comp- money in to make sure that they stay in business. So very simple example. Um, uh, of just validating the investment thesis or, or the problem that you're solving is the right is the right problem. Yeah, it's a great it's a great piece of advice. Um, easier said than done, but obviously so valuable to understand and just really make sure that uh, the problem that you're solving is one that other people are passionate about as well. So when you do meet with somebody like Rob, you can say, hey, we know this is something which is going to resonate with a lot of people. Um, I could continue this conversation for a very long time. Unfortunately, we are out of time for today. Rob, thanks again for joining us. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to share your insights with our listeners. Greg, thank you for having us and uh, appreciate the time. The Finnovate podcast is produced by Informa Connect in association with Provoke.fm Media. Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at Finnovate.com for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening. <laughs>